Hey everybody, welcome to SI.com. I'm David Gardner and this is Wooden Watch, where each week we interview a college basketball contender for player of the year. This week I'm pleased to welcome Creighton senior point guard Maurice Watson Jr. Watson is leading the country in assists at 9.1 per game and he and his Blue Jays are off to a 15 and 1 start. Mo, thanks so much for being with us, man. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. So uh, I wanted to talk first about, I read that when you were growing up, you know, you, you of course in Philadelphia were a big, big East basketball fan uh, and you wanted to play in the NCAA tournament. Now it's taken a little while for you to get to the Big East. You started at Boston University, now you're here and it's taken a little while to get to the NCAA tournament, but it looks like it's going to happen for you guys this year. Does it feel like everything is kind of starting to come together for you in your senior year? Uh, yeah, I definitely think that. I definitely think it's uh, God's timing uh, for all the hard work that I put in it. Um, how patient I've been and how I've just tried to be consistent through everything I've done. Um, I just try to, you know, follow the path. Um, I know that everybody's journey isn't the same, and um, I just wanted to keep working hard to achieve my goals, and um, it looks like this year they're going to happen, and um, I am just want to keep making hard, uh, keep working hard to make sure that, that they do happen. Now, I know you grew up a Villanova fan, uh, and you're 0-3 against the Wildcats since you got to Creighton. I hate to bring that up, but you have one more chance late February to win. Is that the kind of game that would mean more to you than just a regular Big East game, or do they all kind of go the same? Uh, I mean, that game kind of goes as every other game goes. Um, I try to leave it out there every time I go on the court. Uh, but to beat a team like Villanova means more for the program than it would uh, for myself just because they're – and there are some champions, they're number one in the country uh, at, you know, multiple points in, um, of the season. So uh, to be able to get that win for the program is what means more to me. Um, you know, I think last year it would have, but I think that's just um, what I've been trying to be more focused on this year is um, me playing for the team and, you know, putting everything into the program and, you know, letting all the success that falls my way happen um, just as long as it stems from the team. Now, I've heard you say in interviews a lot that you're out to prove your doubters wrong. You know, you're a small guy at 5'10", you're 160 in high school. Uh, is, is that still something that drives you? Do you still feel like you have that chip on your shoulder? Or since you're leading the country in assists and you're playing in a power conference, does that make you feel like you've really arrived? Uh, no, it, I mean, I'm still hungry. I'm as hungry as I've ever been. Just because, I mean, I see all the, you know, the way I play and, uh, you know, the success that I have. You know, there are still doubters out there. There are still... You know, there's not like I'm, you know, high on any draft boards or anything. You know, there's still things I need to improve um, to people. And there are things that of my game that I need to improve so that when I do go talk to them, people, that there's no um, there's no negative thing they could say. Um, so to be honest, I just use everything as, you know, motivation to keep working harder. Um, I don't want to, you know, let the success, you know, stop me from, you know, working harder. I like that I have it. So it makes me want to, you know, work 10 times as hard to make sure that it keeps happening. Um, and I hope my teammates sees that too. That way, you know, they can follow behind and you know see how the work ethic and you know how listen to the coaches and how you know just you know you know just waiting your time and um, you know letting the chips fall where they may um, and let things work out for you that way. Now, your coach Greg McDermott was talking to our own Maggie Gray earlier, and he said he challenged you at the beginning of the season to lead the country in assists, and he didn't expect that you'd be able to do it. And not only are you leading the country in assists, you're averaging more than one assist per game, better than the guy in second place. How did you respond to that goal when Coach McDermott gave it to you? And has this success so far even surprised you? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, you know. I felt like it was going to be easy when Coach Mack challenged me to that, and that's because I saw how hard my teammates had been working. Uh, I saw that everyone was improving and everybody was getting better. So um, I knew my teammates would step up, and I knew that, you know, I was going to um, improve and, you know, finding, you know, guys in better spots. And, you know, the fact that I'm having this success is all key to them just because they're making the baskets. And, you know, it's easy to, you know, to find guys when you're um, as aggressive as I am with getting to the rim. And you, know, you have Justin in there, so guys are open for shots. Um, and then when you run, you know, teams wear down and get tired. You know, it's easy when we can, you know, be in good shape. That's also a testament to what we do off the court, you know, that we're, you know, keeping our bodies up and we're doing the right things. Um, so, you know, it's another challenge, you know, even though it's coming from my head coach, it was something that I wanted to step up in um, and beat that task. You were known as a scorer in high school. You even outscored Will Chamberlain. And when you were playing for your father, you used to joke that uh, if you weren't scoring 25 points a game, he'd be mad at you. Was it a difficult transition going to college and being more of a pure pass-first point guard? I mean, even when you were at Boston, you were third in the country in assists. Uh, no, not really. Just because, you know, my senior year, um, you know, I had a lot of guys, a lot of, you know, 
college coaches and mentors that kind of you know, gave me the game early. Um, and you know, a lot of guys told me that I needed to start to prepare for the next level. And in high school, college was the next level I needed to you know, get ready for it. So my senior year, I kind of, I mean, I really only averaged 21 that year. and I averaged seven assists just because I wanted to start to prepare myself to, you know, lead a team. And um, that was actually one of the best years we had. So that actually just, you know, kind of started the role of, of um, you know, letting my passing um, lead to the success and the wins. Now, most people know you as Mo, but you have another nickname that you actually prefer. Could you tell us the story of how you got the nickname Doop and why you like it so much? Uh, yeah, uh, I have no problem telling that story. <laughs> uh, you know, I just, uh, I really grew up just idolizing Allen Iverson, and you know, I got to meet him um, in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, back where I'm from, uh, he was at a picnic, and you know, we were playing catch with the football, and you know, I was heckling him all day, and he ended up, you know, uh, watching me play one on one against somebody. Um, I lost the first game and, you know, I won the second one. And, you know, he just took me out to get some food and, you know, kind of just, you know, told me that I reminded him of a shorty doo-wop. So I was crying after I lost one of the games. You know, that was my, you know, I was only 12 or so. So, you know, I was really emotional and um, I didn't want to lose in front of my favorite player. So I wanted everybody to call me doo -wop after that. Because um, I went to a Sixers game and he didn't forget, you know, he still called me that name. So uh, even when, the, you know, my freshman, sophomore year in college, I just hated when announcers would call me Mo. I just, you know, prefer WAP. My mom will call me WAP. Well, she never really does. You know, she has another name for me. But, you know, a lot of people call me WAP, and I just, you know, I like that name and stick with me. Well, now I have to ask, what's mom's nickname for you? Uh, uh, she calls me Boom. How come? Her, uh, her and Grandma. How come she calls you Boom? I have no idea. I don't remember. <laughs> have you talked to Allen Iverson since uh, he recognized you on the court down there? Uh, yeah. You know, I feel we go to Seacher's games. Um, I used to play for his old uh, his old manager, uh, Q Gaskins. He ran uh, the Raiders program, and I played for them a couple of years. Um, so, you know, I got to, you know, kind of talk to him. Um, but, you know, with all the stuff going on and, um, you know, that he was going through back then in those times and how he's, you know, was trying to recover his life, and now he's going through all the success, you know, I, I don't want to be one that's, you know, that's going to bother that. You know, I have my own things I need to work on also. You know, I was young, and I had goals to achieve myself. And, you know, I used him as a guy, but I didn't want to um, try to stop, you know, and come in between stuff that he had going on in his life. All right, now the final question I ask to everybody who's on the show, because this is Wooden Watch, if you had a vote for Player of the Year right now and you cannot choose yourself, who would be your pick? Uh, I would just have to go with Alonzo Ball, just, just because of the numbers he puts up with the rebounding that he has. And, you know, it was hard to come out of high school with the amount of pressure that he has. And, you know, he kind of talks really confidently, um, him and his brothers, and, you know, and they back up a lot of things that he say. So, um, you know, I, I respect that. And, you know, I kind of watched UCLA last year, and they are just a whole different team without him. So uh, I would have to give it to him.